This actually happened just the other day in Chinatown on Casino Boulevard. And uh, this video is on uh, YouTube where you can watch the entire video. A guy attacked his car and then this car rammed him through the damn bakery. And I went to visit the place. Okay, so they've got some stuff blocking me from actually seeing it, so I'm gonna get out. But as you can see, that's the uh, that's the school right there, or the, then that's the uh, silver building. So the place is actually right here. I just can't see. Oh, there's the dumpling house, and that's the bakery. Yeah, and that's the parking meter. So the guy, the guy did a turn right here, and he hit that bakery and he crashed right through it so they they had to uh they had to uh what is it called they had to uh put down the metal gates but uh you'll notice that in that video there's where's the watermelon stands right there yeah so that shit is crazy how you gonna smash through the damn bakery like that over a parking spot no less but as you can see parking here is tight So basically, this right here is supposed to be the future of um, automobiles right here. Yeah, it looks absolutely ridiculous, but um, there's an Oregon-based company that it's called Arximoto. Ar Arximoto? Archimoto? I don't know how you pronounce it. I haven't heard it pronounced, but it really probably doesn't matter because these things look absolutely ridiculous. But these are electric vehicles that supposedly the New World Order has pled for making deliveries to old women's houses for like pizza and uh, it looks like flowers and whatnot. And um, this is actually kind of depressing to watch. I mean, you mean to tell me that in the future we're going to have like single person, single occupancy vehicles with like small cargo areas? It doesn't even make sense. It's like... You could buy, like, a Tesla Model Y, and you could fit so much more stuff in there. But uh, I don't know how much these things are supposed to cost. In fact, let's find out how much these stupid things cost. Let's see. Do today $100. You're, you're going to take $100 from me, and I don't even know. I don't know anything about this thing. How much is it supposed to be? It says fully refundable at any time for any reason. 173 city mile per gallon, huh? Uh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. First of all... I understand that you want to use these things as short-range delivery vehicles that you recharge overnight. Okay, I understand that. But the thing about it is, I don't feel safe riding around in something like that. I mean, it doesn't have doors. I mean, what happens if a Jeep Grand Cherokee hits me or something? It's like, that thing would get totaled. And, and I'm supposed to trust that thing? I don't know. I, I just, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. But the point of the video that I'm making right now is to talk about electric vehicle stocks so in my portfolio i'm up considerably on candy neo and as you probably know if you got into tesla tesla was above i think it was like five something today um uh, it just retreated recently to 499 but i think that's after hours trading so that could go either way before the dow even opens back up in the morning but um this company arsimoto is a uh, stock tag FUV. So this is them right here, FUV, Arsimoto. Now, as you can see, their stock has actually increased 40%. Let's go back a year. Uh, it used to be $1.69, and it gradually now has increased to $16. So here's the thing. I believe that it's possible this stock is going to take a dip because I, I can't imagine that this stock is going to uh, rapidly increase very quickly. And the reason why is because right now nobody's talking about it except me. I mean, have you ever heard, have you heard anybody else talking about some damn FUV? I don't think so. Now, here's the thing. It's relatively cheap at $16, even though that is a little bit more expensive. I, I would rather try to get it under 10 if possible, so this way I could buy 100 shares to start, spend maybe about $1,000 and get it under $10 per share. Um, I, I like to start with $100 when you're dealing with an expensive share like this. And in my opinion, anything that's over $10 is expensive. But my thing is, I, I think this might be a stock that you might want to keep a watch on. 
Uh, if you're one of those heavy rollers who's got plenty of money to spare and you want to, you know, put down a thousand bucks or whatever, buy a hundred shares of this, you could. But I, I think it may decrease, it may decline because the thing about it is, again, nobody's really talking about it. Now, the problem that I see is Tesla has been dragging a lot of stocks up, especially American stocks, specifically Workhorse and uh, what was the other one? Nikola Motors. Now, the problem with Nikola Motors was fraud. So what ended up happening was they had gone up to damn near $100 per share and quickly dropped back down. Now, the problem with fraud is fraud is something that you can never actually be 100% certain that it's going to happen or not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, this is Nikola. Uh, right here in Wikipedia, we can go and we can see the fraud allegations because uh, Wikipedia is the easiest place where you can find out about it. So it says uh, on uh, September 10, 2020, a uh, short seller, uh, Hindenburg Research, released a report accusing Nikola of being an intricate fraud perpetuated largely by Milton. Further verification by Financial Times confirmed the report's claim regarding a showcase Nikola one rolling down a slope with no onboard proportion and instead by using the force of gravity. God damn. So basically what they did is to make it look like their car actually worked these bastards put this thing on a slope and they pretended that the thing actually moved when it just turned out that the guy just probably took his foot off the brake and it just coasted down the slope that's a damn shame now here's the thing though this is an american company along with uh who else uh workhorse right now workhorse i think is about 22 dollars a share right now the thing about american companies is american companies fraud like this can actually happen you see, in China, if you do that level of fraud, chances are you're going to get executed. See, a lot of people don't understand Chinese law. Well, over in China, if you are a drug dealer, if you're a gun dealer, if you are a fraudster, if you're an embezzler, if you steal money from the government, uh, basically what the Chinese police do is they take you out. Well, first of all, you do get a trial, which you're pretty much guaranteed to lose. Um, and, uh, basically what they do is they take you out into a field and they put two bullets in the back of your head and then they send your family a bill for the bullets. And that's pretty much the reason why I actually trust Chinese companies a little bit more because I know that the chances for fraud are a lot lower. In America, if you commit fraud, like for instance, there's a rapper who is stealing PPE money. <laughs> wait, wait, what was it? Wait, rapper steals... Uh, what, what was it called? Um, PP, PPE money. And uh, this kid, this kid was, uh, yeah, PPP money. I'm sorry, Morris Fade. Yeah, so there's a rapper who decided that what he was going to do was he was going to steal PPP money by claiming uh, massive, massive amounts of unemployment fraud. And he took the money, and I believe he bought diamonds and jewelry and PlayStation 5 and, and race cars, Lamborghinis. It's always Lamborghinis. never fails. Um, Lamborghinis get stolen in PPP fraud a lot for some Well, because they're cool, you know. Um, so, and, and then there was a guy who, who bought a Tesla with his money. A guy allegedly spent all this money buying a goddamn Tesla. Now, had this been China... I wouldn't even have to be talking about these cases of fraud because the Chinese police would have executed these people already. They're, they would have had a two-hour trial. They would have been found guilty. And then they would have had two bullets put in the back of their head. And uh, I believe their organs would have been sold off to the highest donor. So in America, fraud is rampant where people actually believe that they can just steal from the government and whatnot and not have to worry about it. I mean, yeah, you might go to jail. You might not. You might not even get caught. But um, when it comes to trusting a business, I actually trust a lot of Chinese corporations a little bit more. So um, that's just how I feel about it. Because the thing about it is it's just so much less likely. Like, for instance, when we had all those, uh, you know, those frauds uh, committed to people who were buying homes in 2008 and uh, people were having their money flat out stolen and there were people lying on applications and whatnot. Well, if you'd done that same thing in China, well, basically the Chinese police would have uh, given you a trial. They would have taken you out into a field and they would put two bullets in the back of your head. So fraud is less likely to happen there. Let's just leave it at that. Fraud is a lot less likely to happen when the odds of you being taken out into a field and having two bullets put in the back of your head 
are high, most people don't want to commit fraud. I don't know why. I, I guess they feel they have too much to lose or something. Or, or even right now, you know how we just had an election and nobody trusts it because of voter fraud and they believe that, um, you know, nobody on either side trusts it. First of all, we know Trump is doing his best to steal enough states to possibly have a chance at winning, despite the fact that he's like, what, 40 votes or 47 votes beyond, below the threshold. And then you've got him trying to steal those votes from Biden and everything. And then they're alleging that there were people committing massive amounts of voter fraud across several states. Well, had this been China um, and that had been proven, well, basically anybody who was uh, committing voter fraud would have been taken out into a field and had two bullets put in the back of their head. So chances are they probably wouldn't have wanted to commit voter fraud. Chances are. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. There so are a lot of people who kind of don't understand the Chinese market, mostly because they've never actually lived in China like I have. And... What I remember about the Chinese market was that it was filled with a lot of boring, small, four-cylinder econo boxes. Electric vehicles are giving the Chinese auto buyer a chance to bypass those horrible little econo boxes and get themselves a decent, fast-accelerating, high-torque electric econo box. And the thing about the Chinese market, now I was looking, I was reading back news. Now this was May 31st. Bloomberg was talking about how China was trying to salvage its electric car uh, industry. But you think about the date, May 31st. This was uh, right after March when we had that crash. Uh, March 18th, we had that crash. So basically, all stocks were pretty much down. What ultimately brought all stocks up again was the fact that Tesla started rallying because Tesla was starting to deliver their Model Ys a little bit early. Now... Tesla showing you what EV could be using the Model 3 and the Model Y and being able to give you an electric vehicle half the price of the overpriced Model S and the overpriced Model X. Well, they basically dragged all of the other EV companies upwards with them. Now, I always talk about how when Tesla was just, what was it? It was like less than $30 per share. I was able to buy a large amount of Tesla, and then recently I was able to sell out of it above $1,000 per share. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? Right now, most of these damn companies, these EV companies in these other countries, especially a country like China, these, country, these countries uh, around China, China basically, regardless what you hear from the U.S. government and regardless what you hear from Fox News, China basically already controls Southeast Asia and Asia. China is going to be selling these cars all over Thailand, Philippines, South Korea. They're going to be selling these cars all over. That's the bottom line. Now, I know South Korea is not going to be challenged as much because they have uh, Hyundai and they have Kia. And I also know Japan is never going to let China really challenge them inside Japan. They're going to have their own Toyotas and Nissans and Acuras and Altimas and all that nonsense. But... The bottom line is, when it comes to the poorer countries like India, Tata Motors, for instance, is going to be directly challenged by Chinese imported electric vehicles, which is one of the reasons why I'm glad I bought Candy. K-N-D-I, uh, they're making cars as cheap as $10,000 that they're going to have on the American market. And for a lot of these school kids, that may end up being their first car. They're never going to be able to afford a Tesla. I mean, you're talking about an $80,000 car, $50,000 at the cheapest for a new one. It's like they're going to, the best Tesla they'd ever be able to buy is a used one. And even then they're going to have issues with that because ultimately you need an infrastructure and you also need a reason to buy that car over a gas car. And in most cases, a four-cylinder econo box, like a Nissan Altima, the official car of the cheating girlfriend, that's actually more economical and it's easier to deal with. Now, I just want you to understand, China gives subsidies to people who are buying uh, electric vehicles. So, for instance, 10,000 yuan, that's basically 1,500 U.S. dollars, right? So they're giving as much as 1,500 U.S. dollars 
uh, to rural residents who buy approved uh, electric vehicles or new energy. Basically, they're talking about electric vehicles. If you live in Guangdong province, that's basically Hong Kong, but they call it Guangdong in Mandarin. So Shanxi province has as much as 8,000 yuan. So you're talking about around $1,000 if the exchange rate is like 6.67 .6 or whatever it is. Uh, when I was there, it was 8.275. Uh, so basically, figure that's about $1,000 to customers or consumers who buy vehicles that are made there. Uh, Shanghai, give, that's where I lived, gives customers uh, who buy their first new energy vehicle 5,000 yuan. So that's a little less than $1,000. I think it's closer to $700. Um, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hangzhou, um, they are giving these people about $1,500 uh, increase of license plate issuance, okay? And then you've got Zhejiang, Jilin, Chongqing, Sichuan. They're giving out 5,000 yuan in order to support trading in old vehicles for new ones. You remember what we called that? We called it cash for clunkers when we did that. And in the long run, I actually, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, the government shouldn't be giving out money to do stuff like that. Well, in the long run, it's actually kind of better because not only does it help, you know, keep our air cleaner, but it also keeps these horrible old vehicles off the roads. Because, you know, a lot of these old people, they'll drive these cars into the ground, even if those things are dangerous. Like, I hate being around certain cars because they don't have the technology I have. Like, I have front and rear bumper sensors. They don't have that stuff. So that means if they back into your car, they damage your paint job and this, that, and other. Meanwhile, if they had bumper sensors, you know, they'd be less likely to back into your car because then they'd be aware of the damage that they could cause their own car. But if they've got an old car that's made mostly of metal, they'll back right into you. They care less and they'll keep on moving. They may not even know they hit you. And then you've got these cars that are constantly breaking down. Well, think about it. If a car breaks down, it causes traffic to pile up. That causes all of us to be more upset and it causes us to be less efficient. So... In the long run, you know, a cash for clunker style program, it's like I'm down with it. It's like whatever. I mean, it's better than blowing holes in Iraq and Iran, right? <laughs> and and causing misery on a lot of people who just going to turn around and be terrorists and come try to blow us up. So anyway, um, those governments over there are giving a lot of incentives to their people in order to buy electric vehicles. Now, the problem is Tesla's too expensive. Neo X Pung. And Li Autos are the ones that are being focused on in the Chinese EV groups simply because they are kind of making pretty much the best looking cars. I mean, unfortunately, I go here and I got this 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 ugly thing, this deliverator. And and they very well, they, they might prove me wrong. They might end up selling a lot of these things and they I don't know how. But they might end up selling a lot of these things and getting a lot of people to be Uber deliverers or, you know, deliver Amazon packages or something. I don't know. But they, they very well might prove me wrong and, and they might become a huge. I don't know. They might. I don't know. Because that lady seems to like them. But um, the thing about it is when you look, when you expect to buy a car, you want a car that looks like a car. You don't want some crazy contraption from Total Recall or bad sci-fi movie. And for the most part, they seem to be styling these things conservatively enough where your average buyer would buy one. Like, I'm looking at the front of this car. It kind of looks like a McLaren. <laughs> it kind of looks like somebody took the front of a McLaren 720. Kind of. I don't know. I don't know why it looks like that to me. But they've also got a lot of other ones, and they're trying to make them luxurious. Because, you know, the inside of a Tesla right now ain't shit. I, I, I've knocked on Tesla a lot. But they're trying to make these things look luxurious. It kind of looks like a Ford product to me. This looks exactly like how that new Mustang is going to look, the Ford Mustang EV. So, uh, Neo's doing their thing. And then you've got x -Pung. Most of these damn things are like clones of each other. But uh, for the most part, they look decent. Like, they look at this. The inside of this looks pretty good. You can do this research on your own. But uh, they look pretty decent. I mean, I wouldn't feel bad being seen in that right there. You know, unfortunately, as soon as everybody finds out it's like made in China, it's like some people are going to knock on me. But um, I have to say, I mean, they don't look bad. They do. They look basically like higher end versions of Teslas. In fact, you can see a lot of the parts 
that they've copied right off of Tesla. Like, for instance, the uh, rear view mirror in the Tesla Model X has like a very simple magnetic clip. So basically what they've done is they've copied a lot of the design uh, cues, like obviously the big touch screen. But see, most people want to have more buttons. So what they've done is they were like, you know what? Tesla keeps on making these cars as cheap as possible. They've taken out your control stalks. They've taken out as many buttons as they can. But they're like, we're not going to take out the buttons. That's just stupid. And I agree with them. Tesla shouldn't have taken out all those buttons. There's certain buttons that I expect to see in a car. So the Chinese automakers are going to make better Teslas. We'll say it like that. They're going to make better Teslas. And the only thing that Tesla is going to really have going for it is the fact that it's got the brand name Tesla that everybody by now recognizes. The issue ultimately is going to come down to what kind of interior do you want to see in a car? Now, when you're talking about lots of these uh, young people who have shit credit and they can't afford a Tesla at all, they're going to end up in a lot of these cars, especially the candy. Like, the candies look terrible, in my opinion. I'm sorry. They really do. Now, I'm glad the stock is going up for me. I'm glad I'm making money on the stock. But look at these things. I wouldn't be caught dead in one of I would rather put a bullet in my own head than have to drive around in one of those things. I'm sorry. Look, look at that thing. That thing doesn't even look as good. It looks like a Tata Nano on steroids. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. But... Bottom line is, small foreign people in small countries that have access to electric plugs, they're going to buy them. So, uh, you know, people just like that, they're going to buy them. They're going to buy them. Indonesia, Southeast Asia, all the islands of uh, Oceania, those people are going to buy them, you know. So my thing is, it's like, you know, instead of me hating, let me just buy the stock and ride the stock to victory. That's what I'm going to do. Just buy, just ride it to victory. So I already bought my candy. I already bought my Neo. I already bought uh, X-Pung. I already bought Lee Autos. And the thing about it is they are up. So these are my weed stocks. Let me get past this. I'm sorry about the uh, blur of the uh, camera because the problem is uh, my monitor is very bright. And uh, it's a gaming monitor. So... Ultimately, my uh, phone takes time to figure out what's happening because it's like, why the hell are you staring into the sun? But anyway, Lee Autos, 3644, if you had bought it at its low, its low for 52 weeks was actually, what is it, 3481? Is that, let me just double check, make sure that's not a mistake. Um, let's see, over one year, oh yeah, well, it's actually been, it's been pretty high. Let me see, Lee Auto. Li Auto. But uh, I do know the, the, the important thing to remember is that Li Auto is being talked about. That's the important thing to remember. So this is the performance over the last five years. As you can see, it's basically nothing but up. You got to remember, with the Chinese, there's more Chinese teenagers than there are Americans. That means that there's basically more than 300 million Chinese teenagers than there are America. We have a population around like 330 million tops. So ultimately, their buying power is so much higher. The potential there to buy is higher. Don't let Fox News lie to you about how much poverty is there. Yeah, they've got a lot of poverty, but over the last 20 years, they've lifted a hell of a lot of people out of poverty. I believe it was more than 450 million. Meanwhile, in America, we seem to be going deeper and deeper into poverty and debt, by the way. So, um, you know, be careful with the propaganda. I know a lot of people hate to hear me talk about it because, you know, I actually live there. So I've seen, you know, the reality, you know, but uh, a lot of the people who say this shit on Fox News, they've never actually actually been there. You know, they don't know the language. They don't know how to talk to the people. They don't know anybody there. They just say stuff, you know. So my thing is, it's like I, I like to be real about what I'm talking about instead of just, you know, repeating talking points from Fox News. So, anyway, uh, they actually have a story right here. Will Neo or Lee Auto Stock grow more by 2025? Oh, absolutely. I don't even have to think about that one. Absolutely. 
as time goes on, their government is going to put more incentives into EV and mandate EV. They're going to get rid of those gasoline cars. Gasoline's not cheap in China. It's actually cheaper for you to have electricity. The government in China is focusing on their EV infrastructure, and eventually they're going to have lots and lots of charging places for people to charge. And since most of the people live in apartment buildings, I don't foresee this being too big of a problem for them to get it accomplished. So I like what what the um, what they're saying right here. They're saying Neo is reaching into more than just the smart vehicle self AI and autonomy are the next major tech booms. I honestly think it's going to be a while before autonomy really gets big. However, for right now, it's basically an advanced cruise control. So anyway, about 38% of traders and investors told us Lee Auto will grow the most in the next five years. Well, I just told you I know they're going to grow. I don't know which one's going to grow the most. And that's the reason why what I do is I buy like 100 shares of each company just to start. So this way I can be in them to win them, you know. So um, everybody's talking about NEO, which is good, because that means NEO could grow. Because you think about it, if you had just 30 shares of Tesla back in 2012, 30 shares of Tesla would have cost you what? Let's see. Um, well, 30 shares times another 30 would have cost you $900. So you would have paid a little less than $1,000 but that same 30 shares right now would have been, well, right, well, they went up to, what was it, $1,500 before they split? That would have been $45,000 you could have possibly made. But even if you only had 30 shares times $500 right now, that would have been $15,000. And that's assuming you didn't hold the shares when they did the split. Because if the, the whole point of doing these splits is to keep you in the stock. It's like you, they want to keep you in as long as possible. You know, if you're lucky, they pay you a dividend. And uh, they want to keep you in there as long as possible. But uh, as you you saw how the stock split went with both Tesla and Apple at the same time. So they're, they're trying to keep these people in that stock. But um, what was I thinking? Okay, so anyway, um, Candy right now, like I was, I was talking about Candy, it was just like a week ago. It was like $6.87 a week ago. It's $14. So I already... If you had bought it when I told, even if you had waited and bought it, because when I told you about candy, it was way back in, uh, it was way back in like before the summer. It's like you should have more than doubled your money at this point. You, some of you might have even quadrupled your money at this point. I know if you had bought Neo, you probably bought it around three fifty when I was trying to tell you about Neo, and uh, you're up to forty eight dollars. And this, you got to also remember, a lot of this money gets traded after markets because of the fact that China is awake while we're asleep over here in America. So, um, LFC, this is China Life Insurance. No. Okay. So, Neo, Candy, and XPEV. Um, let me see what Tesla's doing after hours. What are they doing? Tesla is still at 499 It was like 500 and something early. Yeah, $508, man. It went up to $508. And, uh, you know, I start getting emails and text messages from people who I, you know, have told about getting into these things. So what I'm going to do is for my tech stocks, I'm going to add, uh, by the way, before anybody asks, I use TD Ameritrade because I keep getting asked that. It drives me nuts. Um, okay, I'm going to add uh, LUV, I wait, or is it LVU stock? I forget what these guys are. Uh, what what is this? The Deliverator. This nonsense. Archie Moto. RC Moto. Let me just uh, see what their uh, stock symbol is. RC Moto is called FUV. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that one into my tech chart. Okay, so you just add a stock in there. FUV is Archie Moto Common Stock. Sixteen. What I'm gonna do. What I, cause uh, what I give you, uh, stop, 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 stock symbols. I don't know what you use to trade CCIG. Um, that's something else. Merger Corp. Okay, no, no, forget that one. Okay, so anyway, when I give you um symbols, I don't know what trading platform you're using, but this is how mine works. So basically, I can buy and sell right out of my watch list. Um, okay, so that makes things easier for me. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, tech is still doing very well. Tech is going to continue to do very well. As you can see, Apple's inching up. It's 118 right now. It went up to 137, but you had a lot of short sellers sell out of it. Um, as you know, I always I keep saying the same thing. I told you to buy AMD and Logitech back before $50. So, you know, if you bought it, you're up 33 on one and 35 on the other right now. I already know AMD is going to keep on moving. AMD, by this time next year, AMD is going to be way past $100. I already know it. Because uh, at the rate that AMD is releasing products and at the rate that they're gaining new uh, uh, people to invest in them, no, AMD is AMD is gonna be very very good. They, I I think they might shit. They might even hit two hundred dollars within a year, at the rate that things are going. Because you got to remember, a lot of people have de, um, they've they've decoupled themselves from the stocks that they used to have, and then they put all their money into technology because they see the technology is moving up. Um, oil is slowly moving up and everything, but um, we still got some time to go. The banks, it's really funny because I actually shorted some bank stock. And as soon as I decided to short them, all of a sudden they decided to go up a little. Wells Fargo hitting $26 and Bank of America hitting $26. And I shorted some of those stocks because I wanted to afford something else. And all of a sudden, as soon as I short them, everything goes up. Now, mind you, the Dow has not closed over 30000 yet. We're still at like 29400 or something like that. But um, I'm up just today. I'm up $3,500. So I'm actually waiting to see how long it's going to take for the Dow to actually close in the $30,000 range. But uh, very, very, very interesting. These are all the uh, smaller oil and the oil mining and whatnot stocks that I had. But I told you about that back in the video. I am an oil man. That was a long time ago. Right now, I'm not focusing on oil because, again, the economy, they're talking about shutting down again. Airlines aren't moving, cruise lines aren't moving, they account for about 40-something percent of the oil being used. So until the oil uh, the until the oil that they use for the airlines and the cruise lines are being used again, then you're not going to see those stocks come back. And, oh shit, Tesla just took a shit. Tesla went down 499 to 493. Oosh. Just that quick. I was just talking about it. All of a sudden, they're down 499 to 493. Damn. Oh boy. <laughs> but hey listen you already know what it is with tesla tesla is a roller coaster just hope that you know just hope that they keep doing what they're doing they bring out that cyber truck get those people into these electric cars so we can make some money off them but uh basically that's what i was focused on now i know jim kramer has been uh talking about workhorse but see workhorse is still down from their 30 dollar 99 cent high for the last 52 weeks I'm not saying that they're not bet good. I'm just saying it's like hopefully you already bought into them because the thing about it is once these things go past $20, I, I consider them a little too expensive to bother getting into. Because here's the thing. If you're going to day trade, first of all, you got to understand, um, I believe it's 90% of day traders don't earn enough money to equal like $40,000 annually. So the bottom line is most day traders aren't really making much money. I'm not a day trader. I actually invest i hold for a long time and then i trade later um most day traders really aren't making a lot of money now the youtubers you see popping up claiming to be rich day traders most of them are lying if not all of them the vast majority of these guys are lying um and they've used other money and other means to get themselves uh their youtube channels at which point that they're bragging about how much money they're making but for the most part, that's usually not true. Statistics have shown that most day traders aren't making a lot of money. If you're buying into the market and you're trying to flip money, then that would, you know, if you're doing it on a daily basis, then that would make you a day trader. Yeah, you could definitely flip some money, but the question is whether or not you can make enough to live off of it. And chances are the answer is no. So the bottom line is um, a lot of the stocks that I try to buy into are things that I know I can hold for a long period of time and sell later at a, you know, when once the buying frenzies come back. Because you got to remember right now, this market is basically depressed. Most people aren't trying to go out and buy anything right now. The smart ones anyway. Stupid people are going out there and spending money left and right on PlayStation 5s and um, jewelry and... Um, and stuff like that, you know, so my thing is, it's like right now, this is a depressed market, it's like, 
most people really aren't spending the money. They're not try. Obviously, they're not traveling. You know, so the market just isn't where it should be. It's like all of the real strength in the Dow is in a handful of tech companies that are all worth a trillion dollars. Furthermore, some people didn't understand. They asked me, well, why is it that Tesla started going up so quick? Well, Tesla was added to the S&P 500. So that means that now Tesla is a part of the index stock. So what that but basically means is that anybody who wants to invest in Tesla, instead of buying Tesla shares directly, you can invest in the S&P and you can have a small piece of Tesla added on to all the other stocks that you have sandwiched in that index fund. Um, people who buy index stocks for the Dow, they have the exact same advantage. So my thing is, if you really want to invest over a long term, especially if you're a young person and you're new to the game, you're not old, if you don't understand individual stocks and you don't like doing research you could also just buy index funds you could buy the dow index funds you could buy you could pick a good uh s p 500 index fund and you could say okay well here's a thousand dollars put it into the fund and that can still be advantageous for you too because as you see we're having a technology revolution and um over time, technology is doing better and better and better, and these companies are getting huge. I mean, they're all trillion-dollar companies like Microsoft, Apple. These are multi-trillion-dollar companies coming down. So my thing is, um, a piece of advice, if you really don't want to do the individuals, you can do the index funds. So just keep that in mind. But um, as for me, I do index, but I also do individuals. And what it is, I'll, I'll tell you how I do it. When I get my tax returns um, at the end of the year, like for instance, I'll show you one. This is my property tax, my property tax. And I get two of these. And when they come, I'm just going to show you the little bottom of it. I don't even mind showing you how much it is. This is my property tax check. Can you see that? Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> it's dark. So when I do my taxes at the end of the year, um, when I do my tag, can you see that? What is this? Nine hundred eighty dollars, November sixteenth. Today is obviously November nineteenth, so they mailed this three days ago. So basically, the way it works is when I get my tax returns, that's when I do my investing. Now I used to invest all of my YouTube money, but what ultimately happened is I kept spending all my money on Apple products and video games, and uh, and vacations. You know, so. The thing about it is when I get my tax return come April, I'm going to invest a significant portion of that into index funds. But during the year, what I do is in, instead of investing into index funds during the year, I buy individual stocks. Now, that changes here and there because every now and then something will pop up that I'll suddenly want to buy and I'll just buy into it. And um, that's just how I work. Now, a lot of people don't do it like that or they... You know, they can't do it the exact same way I do it, which is fine. Everybody has their own thing. But um, that's just how I do it. So I'm supposed to get another one of these tax refund checks. This is property taxes. And the reason why is because I own two houses. So I'm supposed to get another one of these. And then on top of that, I'm ready for February for us to do our taxes so I can get my money back from Uncle Sam after uh, President Biden and uh, Kamala Harris swear in. And um, and that's that. And then I can do some more investing. But that's just me. That's just how I operate. Everybody else does their thing differently. Some people invest every single week. Some people invest every single other week. I like to do it with bulk amounts of money because it's easier for me to just say, yeah, I want to buy this, that, this, and that. And I don't have to wait and everything. So that's just how I do it. So anyway, hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, um, I think that's about it of free advice. Um, I know a lot of people are still, you know, messaging me on Instagram and my, uh, Facebook, uh, Jeep Trackhawk Hellcat SRT page and whatnot and telling me about how much money they've made off of some of these stocks, which I'm glad to hear. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. And until something else happens, um, you know, that's, that's it for now.